When they came on Sunday to tear the house down, they had brought, brought somebody there, and my dad asked for paperwork. If they're going to tear it down, show him paperwork. He don't have anything. And I, they showed me some paperwork that they had that was dated in uh, 14 that my stepsister signed for. She doesn't live there. And it, from my understanding, anything that is certified to my daddy, that's who it's supposed to have. He was the only one that's supposed to have signed for because he didn't get it. Okay, and then again, I talked to him, Mr. Travis. It was another building on the property, and I asked him if wanted. If y'all had a reason to tear the house down, why don't you tear the other building down? He said he was, they had to clean the property up. But there wasn't anything wrong with that building. And as far as the house, we was working on the house. We had material in the house, in that house, and also in the building, in the other building. It was a black pickup truck came and removed some of the stuff out of the house. From my understanding, if, it, if they had wanted to tear the house down, whatever was in the house, they should have asked us to take the stuff out. But they didn't. They divided it out between themselves. We had lumber, sheetrock, everything to fix the house up with. And he had started on it. His wife had a stroke. She had had several strokes since then. And I have another piece of property that's not even two blocks from the house. And it's been in disarray ever since I've been here. And it's literally falling down. It's on the trail. The whole back side, the whole building is falling down. But they're going to tear down the house that we was working on, saying it was an eyesore. But that is a health, health, is a health safety. And they didn't even do that. And then Mr. Reed, I called him again after I had looked at the paperwork. And I asked him, so what did it cost me, us, for y'all to tear it down? He, don't have a, he didn't have a price. Okay? But he coming to city council tonight to try to put a lien on the house, on the property. And I asked him, and he said it was a closed meeting. He, he is asking for a public hearing, which will be the next council meeting, not tonight. But he said, it, he told me it was tonight, and he said it was a closed meeting. That's why I came tonight. Then I said, well, when are they going to be open to the public? He said, I don't know. Well, he told me it was not. He told me it was not. Yes, but he told me it was not open to the public. And so I'm trying to figure out. You know, all, what happened to all the material and my dad's car, we got a letter from a uh, yard attorney talking about the cars. Okay, y'all removed the cars out the, out the yard. Okay, you supposed to been cleaning up the yard, but you left a whole half of a car in the yard. But you got my dad, I believe it was a 57 Chevy or whatever kind of truck it was, in which they had been asking about. It. And then he going to tell him that he can come re uh, receive his property, but he got to pay for it. He didn't remove it. And I don't think that's fair. And I don't think it was fair that they tore it down. And after he, he asked for the proper paperwork, they did not give it to him. The you next day. You know this is the second time I asked to think of them? No, I had, I had the paperwork that they gave me. But again, my dad was not, they did not give my dad any paperwork in writing. I'm showing right here what, what Alicia Hicks signed for. It. My dad didn't sign for it. He did not know. I don't mean to interrupt, but the certified mail notice is sent to the person assessing the property for taxes at the address listed in the tax assessor's office. Mm -hmm. Both of these were sent to Mr. and Mrs. Harper at the address they had on the tax assessor's office. If they were returned unclaimed, then you know we have no control over that. But all the law requires is it be sent to the person assessing the property for taxes, which it was. Uh, on two occasions, I believe in 2014 and 2019, mm -hmm. 20, 2020, so twice. Okay, with well, that being said. And then also, also, it's posted at the property as well, so anybody can see uh, who comes to the property, if they live in there, then obviously they would notice it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, anybody coming to the property to clean it up, work on it, would see the notice posted that it has been condemned, and would notify them to contact Mr. Raleigh and to make arrangements to provide a written plan in order to repair the property. So, I mean, particularly that's what happened in this, this, this case. Mr. Harper did get the letter because I spoke with him in 2014. He came in mm -hmm. and he talked to me and said he had materials and he was thinking about fixing it. He said he wasn't sure how much it was going to cost. He may tear it down or he may fix it up. 
And he, I said, we well, need to make your mind up. And that was the last I talked to him. And that was in 14. Right. That was six years. Ago. Okay, from my understanding, my dad said, you, you be the one with the trash people, with the lady with the trash, the tech, collect the money for the trash? That's my apartment. Yes. Okay. So basically he had told me, this was, I'm just saying what he told me. Okay, he said he spoke with you because his wife had had a stroke. And he said when his wife get better, he can't do anything because he didn't know which way she was going. That he would be able to fix the house with, with the hospital bills and everything else, he couldn't afford it. But I stepped in. I started buying material for the house. I was storing material in the building and in the house. And some, they went from your department. But it was a black pickup truck came and helped themselves. Ma'am, you have five minutes. And you I? Have, you've already gone over that time, and I'm going to allow you two more minutes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Riley. But my issue is, you know, when he asked for a copy of the, the, the letter, why they couldn't give it to him. Instead, they brought the police with him the next day. And what happened to everything that I had bought and he had bought, including... He couldn't answer when I asked him. No, it's not a two-way conversation. Mm -hmm. I understand. I understand. Okay. Oh, I thought you wasn't no, supposed to read that. Oh, I'm finished. You finished? Yes, sir. Read. Okay. All right. First thing I'm going to do is just go through the process that we went through uh, to give y'all the understanding. Um, of all the paperwork and photos and just kind of let you see um, how we went through this. So the first folder, we're going to show you the first notice that went out. If you'll go to the second page. All right, so this is the first notice. If you'll go down to the date, you'll see of June of 2014, Travis Carter condemned the structure. At around about the same time is when I became the code enforcement officer that handled the um, condemning of um, houses. Um, if you could go to the next one. The second page. The second page. This is the one where he would have posted it on the house. That's just a copy of it, June 14th. If you'll go to the pictures. Um, and just my personal way of doing things, I don't like going in behind someone else. Uh, doing, you know, I, this was his, um, the work that he done, and I, I, I prefer starting over, so that's what I chose to do. But if you pay attention to the pictures, that's where he posted it, you'll see the condition of the home. You see windows are missing, sides missing, um, roof is damaged. Um, there's a lot of things going on with this home. All right, if we could. Is that all of them? That's all of them. If we could go to my folder. So now we're going to go, we're going to jump forward 2019 to my. This one? Yes, ma'am. All right, if you go to. Go to the second one. All right, this is my notice. Uh, if you go down to the date, uh, October 2019, I condemn the structure again. Um, and the reason for that is when I stepped into this position new, I did not want to use someone else's paperwork and the process they went through, so I decided to start over on it. So that's the reason I recondemned it in 2019. Not only that, I had several conversations with Mr. Harper as he would come in and pay his trash bill and asked him multiple times since 2014 what his plan was for the house. He could never give me straight answers. He never gave me a, a finish line of what it would take um, or what his time frame or anything. So after the years went by, I decided to start the process over. He would get to the picture. All right, so if, you, if you'll notice from 2014 to today, you will see similar pictures. You'll just scroll through them. 
All right, and this is the inside of the house. There's material in there, but to me, it, it's all used material. You see nails hanging out of it. Um, you know, I, I did not see any new materials um, in that house. You can see the rot. You can see, um, you can keep going. You see holes in the floor. You see where the subfloor is. It's um, got a lot of water damage on it. And I mean, the house was in terrible condition. Um, if there was materials in there, I didn't see it. When I, when y'all approved the abatement, I go to that house, I keep the door in, and I take pictures of the inside showing what was in there. And them were my pictures showing what was inside. You can see the exterior of this property is still in the same condition it was in 2014. Um, there's been no improvements. Um, not only that, he had 45 days to make contact with me. And if he disagreed with my findings, he had 30 days to come in here and talk to y'all. They failed to do so. Um, and when they do not make contact with me, I can't work with them. What, I mean, what is the appeal of the when we, we condemned it, does he have an appeal rights in it? After, yes. <laughs> but you'll have to yes, speak to John he, he can, I think it's uh, a period of 30 days he's got from the date of the written notice of the declaration uh, to file challenging his determination. Then once you pass the resolution finding that it is dilapidated, he's got a certain period of time he can appeal to the circuit court by filing an independent action. Okay. All right, I'm going to discuss a few things, a few more things. Uh, if you'll go to the one, no, uh, back out. If you'll go to the one that looks like an envelope. This one? Yes. All right, this is another notice that we sent her after, um, or sent him after, if it'll pull up. But only thing this is is where we notify them that we did remove some vehicles. Um, that's fine. Um, we try not to get involved in vehicles. However, these vehicles was close enough to the structure we felt like we would damage them. So the vehicles were moved off site and they are in storage. They can have them vehicles back. We are not trying to hold them from them. Um, all they have to do is come in City Hall, pay the tow bill that it cost us, and they can go pick them up um, and return them back to their property. So we're not taking anybody's vehicles. Um, as far as me telling her she was going to buy, that, that is not my words. I did ask her about the, um, not to buy it, but if she was asking about settling the lien. It costs the city money to tear these houses down. And if the owner is going to take the property back over and keep the property, they have to satisfy the lien. The reason I don't have that cost is because I have not got to that part of the process. That's the reason it's on the agenda for today to call for the public hearing. I will never tell anybody that it's not open to the public. All of my stuff's open to the public. All my paperwork's open to the public. Anybody's welcome to see my track record. Every city council meeting open all the way. Right. All right. Now, I do want to touch base with a building that she referred to. She is talking about the old Tones building um, that's on, off the rails of trails. She is correct. It is in bad shape on the back side. It is collapsing. Um, I have not personally dealt with commercial buildings in the past. Um, I have strictly stuck to residential homes. However, I did tell her we will look into it. It does need to be dealt with, and our office is working toward that. Um, um, I did bring the police with me. Um, after the fact, because Mr. Harper did come down the street threatening, asking me for paperwork. Once we show up to tear the house down, I don't serve them with paperwork. That paperwork has already been served. If he needed to see the paperwork, he could have very easily came to my office and got the paperwork. Um, and if there was materials in there that was of any value, that same day, he could have asked me if I would allow him to go inside and grab them things out. I've never turned anybody away from doing that. 